All equipment, utensils, and food contact surfaces in the processing facility should be cleaned and sanitized on a daily basis or more often if needed in order to prevent the adulteration of food products. Food contact surfaces are all surfaces that touch or are likely to touch sprouts. Surfaces that could indirectly contact sprouts are also considered food contact surfaces. In order to properly clean and sanitize equipment, utensils, and food contact surfaces, it's important that they be adequately constructed and maintained. The materials used for equipment, utensils, and food contact surfaces should be non-toxic, durable, and non-absorbent. In addition, equipment should be designed to be accessible for cleaning and sanitizing, or be easily disassembled to allow for cleaning and sanitizing. It's important to understand the difference between cleaning and sanitizing. Even though many people believe them to be synonymous, they are really two completely separate steps in an effective operation. Cleaning is the removal of organic material and debris from surfaces in preparation for sanitizing. Cleaning involves washing and rinsing, and is usually done with detergents and soaps, and physical scrubbing or agitation, followed by a potable water rinse. Sanitation is the reduction of pathogens and other microbes from the surfaces that have been cleaned using various means such as chemicals, heat, or other antimicrobial agents to yield a 99.999% reduction of pathogenic microorganisms. In order to properly conduct cleaning and sanitizing activities and to maximize the effectiveness of those activities, there is an order in which those activities should be conducted. First, any equipment that needs to be disassembled prior to cleaning should be taken apart. All surfaces should then receive a pre-rinse with potable water. Next, all surfaces and equipment should be effectively cleaned using hot water, at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit for a manual wear wash, detergent, high pressure, or scrubbing as necessary. There are several factors that will influence the effectiveness of any cleaning program. For example, equipment pre-rinse, the type, strength, and temperature of detergent solution, exposure time, and the amount of physical scrubbing. The detergent soap then should be completely rinsed off with potable water. Next, all surfaces should be sanitized with an antimicrobial agent approved for use in a food processing facility. Commonly used sanitizers include chlorine, quaternary ammonium, or iodine. It's important that the level of sanitizer be adequate to kill pathogens. When using chlorine, a level of 100 to 200 parts per million is considered acceptable. For safety and effectiveness, it's critical to follow label instructions when mixing and applying the sanitizers used. All sanitizer levels should also be checked and recorded. There are also several factors to consider when choosing a sanitizer, such as what type of equipment or surface is to be sanitized, the temperature of the sanitizing solution, the pH and the hardness of the water in the facility, as well as the contact time of the sanitizer. When in doubt, consult with the chemical suppliers for guidance in the choice of detergents and sanitizers. Your SSOP should also detail what chemicals are to be used for each job, how and when they are to be mixed and applied, as well as all precautions to be taken when using each chemical. All chemicals should only be used as labeled and when safe. All chemical containers should be labeled properly. All chemicals should be stored in such a manner so as to not contaminate food, seeds, ingredients, or packaging. Chemicals should not be stored on food contact surfaces and should not be stored in empty food or ingredient containers. Seeds or sprouts should not be stored in a container that previously stored chemicals. Check the labels of all chemicals and do not hesitate to contact the chemical supplier if you have questions. All cleaning and sanitation activities should be reviewed by a supervisor. This provides for uniformity in these activities and allows for changes if needed. If you have a written SSOP, it can help ensure procedures are adequate and consistently performed. 